Hello everyone, welcome to my class. In the last class, we talked about refraction from a single spherical surface. In today's class, we will talk about reflection from a single spherical interface and thereafter we will talk about refraction from a double uh, interfaces, double uh, spherical interfaces. So, let us begin. Let us first talk about reflection by a single spherical surface. Here in this picture, uh, this curved surface, this curved surface uh, represents a uh, mirror and our object is situated at point O and it is start fr uh, from point O or ray start from point O, it goes to uh, the surface of the this reflecting uh, mirror and then after getting reflected, it falls at point I where it forms the image. As discussed in the previous class, C is the center of spherical mirror for uh, this particular case. Object O is situated at a distance x from the center of this uh, from the from this point which we name as point P and uh, the image is, uh, is image is formed at a distance y from this point P and the radius of curvature of this spherical surface is small r. The point at which the ray starting from object O strikes is designated by capital S and the, uh, the height uh, SH, S sorry the height SD is small h. The angles are also represented in this figure. The angle of incidence is phi 1, angle of refract, reflection is phi 2 and now using the geometry we can say that phi 1 is equal to beta minus alpha 1. Now as discussed in the previous class, since we are in the paraxial regime, paraxial means we are considering only the rays which are very close to the axis of the system. What do I mean by saying very close to the axis of the system means these rays makes very small angle with the horizontal axis of the symmetry and once these angles are very small then what we can write is that tan beta would be beta and tan alpha 1 would be alpha 1, tan phi 1 would be phi 1 and in this particular case we can write beta is equal to h by r, beta is this angle and then h is this height and r is the radius of curvature. Okay? Now since we are in the paraxial uh, region, the distance dp it would be approximately equal to 0. What do I mean by 0 is D would approach to P, it would be very closely situated to P and therefore this distance DP can be neglected and in this particular case these relations will relations will hold good. Phi 1 we can write H by R minus H by X while for Phi 2 we can write H by Y minus H by R. Okay? Now, we know what is a uh, law of reflection. The law of reflection says that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Therefore, phi 1 would must be equal to phi 2 and if we substitute for phi 1 and phi 2 in this relation, we will get 1 by x plus 1 by y is equal to 2 by r. This is what we get for a spherical reflecting surface. Now, we will implement the sign conventions what are our sign conventions? We studied them in our last class and the sign conventions are that suppose we have origin at point P, then all the distances left to P would be in negative, all the distances right to P would be in positive. Okay? We will say that these distances are positive and the distances which are left to P, they are said to be negative. Now, from the figure x, y and small r, the all three are on the left side of point P, here this is point P. Okay? Since they, the, all these three uh, uh, parameters are on the left hand side of P, therefore, they all will be negative. Okay? And as per the sign convention, 
we represent the object uh, distance by u and u therefore, u would be minus of x since x is on, on, on the left hand side uh, it is uh, since x is left to p therefore, u would be minus of x. Similarly, we, we would be minus of y and the radius of curvature which is represented by capital R it would be minus of a small r. Okay. Now, substituting this back into equation number 54, we will land up to this relation okay, which is 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 2 by capital R. This relation is called, this expression is called mirror equation. Okay. Now, we will again start talking about refraction. Now, we have already studied refraction from a single spherical surface. Now, we will move towards two spherical surface, double spherical surface. Now, as soon as we start talking about double spherical surface, something which is called lens comes to the existence. Okay. Using double spherical surface, we can bound a medium and this bounded medium is called lens and this is what exactly defined here. A medium bounded by two spherical refracting surfaces is referred to as a spherical lens. Now, here you can see different pictures of uh, different kinds of uh, spherical lenses okay. and these lenses as you can see they are bounded by two spherical surfaces. Here these are the two surfaces in this figure, these are the two surfaces in this figure, these are the two and so on okay. with they, they have their own respective uh, radius. Okay. Now, the topic is thin lens when to call a lens thin, the word thin is a relative word and therefore, to say something thin or thick, we must have a reference thickness, we must compare it with something standard. Okay. Now, the definition here is that, the definition of thinness here is that, that if the thickness of a lens is very small compared to the object and image distances and to the radii of curvature of the refracting surfaces, then only a lens is said to be a, a thin lens. I repeat, if the thickness of the lens is such that it is very small as compared to the other related thicknesses or other related distances. What are the other related thicknesses or distances in a case, case of a lens system? The height of a lens, the distance of an object, the distance of a image, the radii of curvature of the refracting surfaces out of which the lens is formed. If these distances are much larger than the thickness of the lens, then we may call a lens to be a thin lens. Okay? Now, these things you can find in a book by Ajoy Ghatak, optics by Ajoy Ghatak for covering most of the geometrical optics, I am following the book by Professor Ajoy Ghatak. Okay. Now, you can see here, here is a lens which is formed by two uh, refracting surfaces and since there are two refracting surfaces uh, involved, there would be two radii of curvature. Be, uh, the first surface has radii r1 while the second surface has radii r2. Similarly, here in the second case, this is the radii of the first surface, this is the radii of the second surface, this is radius of the first surface, this is the radius of the second surface. Similarly, uh, this is r1 and this is r2. Now, let us go to the sign of r1 and r2. Okay. Now, in the first figure, you, you see that this first curvature which is of radius r1, it is a part of a big sphere. Yeah? You can draw a sphere like this. Okay. This sphere is extending towards the right of the lens. Okay. Now, the origin or center of this sphere would be somewhere here. Now, this radius would be in this direction, is not it? This radius would be on the right hand side of the center of the lens. This since R 1 is on the right hand side, the associated sphere 
is on the right hand side of the lens system we will call R 1 to be positive yeah this is why it is written here R 1 is greater than 0. And now for the second uh, spherical surface if you draw the, draw the corresponding sphere and you will see that this sphere is on the left hand side of the center of the lens okay? and therefore R 2 would be negative. Okay? The distances which are on the right hand side as per sign convention would be positive and the distances which are on the left hand side as per the sign convention will be negative and we will follow the same approach here. Okay? Now in the second case let us see uh, how, do, how do they, what are the signs. Now in the second case we will again draw the sphere. Now R1 is the radius of curvature of the first spherical surface. Now in the green color I am drawing the related sphere. Now you see that this sphere, this sphere appear on the left hand side of the lens. Left hand side means negative and therefore you can see R1 is negative here. Similarly the second sphere will appear on the right hand side of the lens and therefore R2 would be positive. Similarly for this lens, for this particular lens you see that the first sphere is on the right hand side of the lens and also the second sphere is on the right hand side of the lens. Both spheres are, uh, spheres are on the right hand side of the lens. Therefore, in this particular case both R1 and R2 are positive while in the third case both R1 and R2 are negative. Okay? Now, once we know what are uh, the thin lenses and how uh, their uh, radii of curvature are, are calculated or how once they are given whether they are positive or negative, once these things are understood then we can safely move towards the analysis of thin lens. Now here you can see that a thin lens is given and we want to analyze this thin lens, we want to know how this thin lens form an image. Previously we have studied the image formation from a single spherical surface. Now we are going to study the image formation from two spherical surfaces okay? and these two spherical surfaces are placed in such a way that it form a lens. Okay? And what are these two spherical surfaces? This is the first surface with radius of curvature R1 and this is the second surface with radius of curvature so R2. Yeah? R1 is the radius of curvature of the first surface and R2 is the radius of curvature of the second surface. And these two surfaces they uh, join together and they confine a material of refractive index N2 between them. Therefore, the refractive index of the lens is N2 and this lens is kept in a medium of refractive index N1. Okay? Both on left and right hand side of this lens we have same medium okay, and therefore an uh, refractive index on both left and right hand side of the, this lens is N1. Okay. The axis of this lens is uh, given uh, is this OQ line and at point O we have a point object. Okay. I repeat again here we are doing all these analysis in paraxial regime where we only consider the rays which are close to the axis of symmetry, which are close to the axis of the system and they make very small angle with the horizontal axis, this symmetry axis. Okay. Now since the point object is situated at point O and then the ray which emanates from this point will travel in this direction okay, and it will fall at this point on the first surface of the lens. Okay. Now for the time be being we will neglect the second surface of the lens and we will only consider that the lens has only the left surface, the single surface okay? and we will, now tra tra uh, like we will now implement our previous knowledge of image drawing in a single surface case, single spherical surface case and let us see what do we get. Okay? Now, we are just consider, considering this single surface then the sphere will go like this. Okay. Okay, this sphere has center C1, C1 is the center of this sphere and 
the light after reflection now uh, will uh, go let, let us suppose that it goes to point Q yeah the light is start at point O and then it falls at the first interface of the spherical surface and due to the refraction at this point of incident on the spherical surface the light rays follows this path and it falls at point Q yeah. Now, this point Q will work as a virtual object for the, for the second surface for the second spherical surface with radius of curvature R 2. Okay. Now, we will treat point Q as a virtual object for R 2 surface the second surface and then we will again implement the formula which we derived in our previous classes and the, the, then for this virtual object Q a final image I would be formed at this point. Yeah, This is how we will uh, move ahead. Okay. Now, let us uh, start uh, doing it step by step. We will uh, now the first step is that we will exercise this formula which we derived in our uh, previous classes. Okay. Now, object O is situated at a distance x from the lens and image Q is being formed at a distance y prime. Okay. We know that object is uh, the distance of object is represented by u therefore, we will write u is equal to minus x and since Q is a virtual uh, image Q is image which is working as a virtual object for the second interface and instead of writing v we will write v prime for the distance of Q from the lens. Okay. Therefore, y prime which is the distance of q from the lens we will uh, uh, replace this y prime with v prime and since y prime is on the right hand side of the lens system we will say that it is a positive distance and x is on the left hand side of the lens and therefore, we will call x as a negative yeah, with the uh, negative sign is there before x. Okay. Now, we will uh, apply the, the de derived result the, the formula which we derived earlier was n 2 by n 2 minus n 1 by r this is equal to n 2 by v minus n 1 by sorry n 1 by u. Yeah. This was the, the formula which we derived in our previous class we will use implement this formula here. Yeah. In this formula u is minus x okay, u is minus x which is given here and v is v prime which is y prime and what is r? r is the radius of curvature for the first interface and what is radius of curvature of the first interface? The radius of curvature of the first interface is r 1. Okay. Now, after uh, this substitution we will get equation number 56. Okay. As stated before point Q acts as a virtual object for the second refracting surface and the final image is formed at i here at this point okay. and whose position can be determined by what? We will again use this formula for the second interface treating Q as a object and what is the distance of object from the lens? It is y prime or v prime okay. and then let us see what do we get. Now, here the same formula is uh, used here, but the parameters are changed. Now, instead of n 2 we are writing n 1 because the second medium has the refractive index n 1 instead of, instead of uh, what is v? v is the go here yeah v is the this distance. Okay and v prime is the distance of the object which is virtual here yeah and uh, after uh, r is the radius of curvature of r2 is the radius of curvature of the second lens, second interface okay second spherical uh, interface which is this this uh, this is spherical part here yeah. and uh, now what to do now we will add equation number 56 and 58 okay the addition will give this relation okay the, and where small n is given by n 2 by n 1 
it is the ratio of N2 to N1. N2 is the refractive index of the lens material and N1 is the refractive index of the outside medium. Okay. R1 is the radius of curvature of the left uh, spherical surface and R2 is the radius of curvature of the right spherical surface. And what are U and V? U is the image of the object and V is the sorry U is the distance of the object from the lens and V is the distance of the final image I from the lens. <coughs> okay. This formula is known as thin lens formula. Yeah? This formula is known as thin lens formula. Okay. Now, usually instead of writing this big uh, right hand side expression, what people do is that they replace this big right hand side in equation number 59 by 1 by f and therefore, expression number 59 redu reduces to expression 60 which is this 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. This is our final formula where 1 by f is expressed by the equation 61 which is nothing but right hand side of equation 59 okay. and f is known as focal length of the lens. Yeah small f is known as focal length of the lens. Now, you see that while measuring the distances, we did not take into account the thickness t of the lens. Why? Because t is assumed to be very small and therefore, it can be safely neglected and therefore, it did not appear in our formulation. Okay? And therefore, we got equation 60 as a final uh, form of lens formula and focal length is given by expression number 61. Okay. Now, from this final expression 61, we can extract few useful information and what are these pieces of information? Let, let me write this uh, formula here, 1 by f is equal to n minus 1, 1 by r 1 minus 1 by r 2. This is the formula which we derived. Yeah. Now, if a lens is placed in air, what is n? n is n 2 by n 1 and n 1 is the refractive index of air and that is n 2 is refractive index of the lens material. Okay? Now, if the lens is placed in air, therefore, n 2 by n 1 will always be larger than 1 and this is what it is written here, small n is larger than 1. And 1 by if 1 by r 1 minus 1 by r 2 is also a positive quantity, if th these two conditions are met, what are these two conditions? Small n is larger than 1 and 1 by r 1 minus 1 by r 2 is also larger than uh, 0, if this is positive quantity, then the focal length will definitely be positive. Okay? And if focal length is positive, then the lens will work as a converging lens. Okay. If s is equal to great, if f is greater than 0, then lens will act as a converging lens. We have already talked about, uh, about converging lens. What is converging lens? If you shine a parallel beam of light, par, uh, of, uh, parallel beam of rays or parallel beam of light on a lens system and if these rays converse to a certain point on the axis of the system, then this lens is called converging lens. Okay, the lens system bends the rays towards the axis of the lens yeah? and such a lens is called converging lens. Now, if we have a lens which is kept in the air, but if R 1 by R 1 minus 1 by R 2 is negative quantity, then f would be less than 0 and if f is less than 0, then such a lens is called diverging lens. Okay, what is a diverging lens? If you launch a parallel beam of light, okay, then what will happen? This rays will diverge away. Okay, this will not converge to a point on a axis, lens axis. Yeah, th these rays will spread away. 
okay, and the lens which does so is called a diverging lens. Okay. Now, third point is that the, that if a double convex lens, double convex convex lens means this lens here. If a double col double convex lens is placed in a medium whose refractive index is greater than that of the material of the lens, what does it say? It says that if n1 is larger than n2, if lens is placed in a medium whose refractive index is larger than that of the material with which our lens is made and lens is usually made, made out of glass and here what we are considering is that that the outside medium uh, medium's refractive index is larger than that of the glass. If this is the case, then the focal length will be negative and the lens acts as a diverging lens. Why? Because in this formula on the right hand side, we get this relation here yeah? and here the first term is n minus 1, where n is equal to n 2 by n 1. If n 1 is larger than n 2, then n, n would be less than 1 and if n is less than 1, then n minus 1 would be less than 0 and therefore, f would be less than 0, f would be a negative quantity. Okay? It means that the lens which previously was working as a converging lens, a lens which previously was kept in a air which initially was working as a converging lens, if we put this lens in a medium whose refractive index is larger than that of the medium of the uh, refractive index of the medium of the, uh, of the lens, then the same converging lens would behave as a diverging lens. It means it is the relative refractive index which plays a major role in deciding whether a lens will would be working as a converging lens or a diverging lens. Okay? I repeat, we have, we have a lens and we put this lens in air okay? and this lens is made up of a glass, then of course, this lens would work as a converging lens. But the same lens, same structure, if you put this glass lens into a medium whose refractive index is larger than that of the glass, then the same double convex lens will behave as a diverging lens. Okay? Okay, and similarly, the same concept will hold for a double concave lens also, double concave, concave lens means this type of lens. Okay? Hope this is understood. Okay. Now, let us move to the definitions of principal foci and focal length of converging lens. Okay. Now, a lens is given here okay. and an object of height y is kept at a point O on the left hand side of the lens. Okay. In now, in till now, we were considering a point object, now we are not considering a point object, we are considering a point which, which has a certain height. Now, in this particular case, the height of uh, the object is A O which is equal to y unit. Okay? Now, for this uh, object, the lens images this object and a image is formed here at point i and you can see in the figure that this image has a certain height which is again equal to which is equal to b i. Okay? And since the image is inverted, the object was upright, it was uh, above the axis of symmetry, now the image is inverted, it is uh, formed in a downward position yeah the uh, the height of the uh, the uh, height of uh, the height of the image therefore would be measured in minus yeah you see that the height is minus y prime the height of the object is y prime which is positive quantity since it is upright and the height of the image it is minus y prime y minus because our sign convention says that if we have a uh, object which is upright then its height would be measured in plus while a uh, object or Im image which is inverted then it its height would be measured in minus here yeah? 
we will put a minus sign before the height. Okay. Now, to form an image, usually what people do is that they pass one ray with a point f 1 which is called first principal focus of the lens. Okay. What is the property of first principal focus of a lens? If a ray pass through first principal focus of a lens in case of double convex lens, then after refraction, after suffering refraction through the lens, this ray will be this ray will be parallel to the axis of the lens. Okay. Here you see that this first ray this pass through point f1 which is first principal focus and then after getting refracted it became parallel to the axis of the lens. Okay. Now, apart from this ray to form a uh, image uh, we also draw a ray which is parallel to the axis of the system the lens axis in our case yeah, which is uh, designated by ray 2. Yeah. You can see 2 is written here the ray 2 is parallel to the axis of the system on object plane and after getting refracted and this point is called second principal focus okay, and it is represented by f 2 okay, and these two ray meets at point b. Okay. We also pass a third ray which passes through the center of the lens and it goes undeviated. Okay. If the lens is thin and we are in the paraxial regime, then we may assume that there is no deviation in the ray path here yeah, in this particular ray path. All th these three ray meet at point B okay, and then we draw perpendicular from B to the axis of the lens which meets in the axis of the lens at point I and this B I is the image of object A O. Okay. Now, this first focal point f 1 is at a distance f 1 from the lens, second focal point f 2 is at a distance f 2 from the lens okay. and the object from first focal point is uh, supposed to be situated at distance x 1 while the image from second focal point is assumed to be situated at a distance x 2. Okay. Now, the distances on the left hand side of this lens are measured in negative while the distances on the right hand side of this lens is measured in positive. Therefore, you can see that f 2 x 2 are uh, positive while f 1 and x 1 are negative. Okay. The distance of object from the lens is u since it is on the left hand side it is minus u and the distance of the image from the lens is v. Okay. Now, I repeat f 1 and f 2 are first and second focal, uh, fo uh, focal lens, f 1 and f 2 are principal foces and x 1 and x 2 are distance of object and image from first focal point and second focal point respectively. A similar uh, ray diagram can be drawn for a double concave lens yeah, which is shown here in this figure. Okay. Now, here the object is situated at point O, it has a height y. Okay. Now, we will again draw three rays. Okay. The first ray will pass through the first focal point. The first focal point in double convex lens resides on the right hand side of the lens which is here okay. and it will start from point A and will pass through the center, but since the medium is medium of the lens is different here after refraction it will be parallel to the axis of the system. Okay. This is similar to what we have seen here a ray which is passing through f 1 become becomes parallel to the axis of the lens system. 
the same concept is also applicable here a ray which is passing to f1 but here it is not passing to it which appears to pass through f1 okay here we will call a ray which appears to pass through f1 will become parallel after refraction okay now let us again go to the previous figure ray number 2 which is parallel after refraction will pass through the second focal point now let us go to the next slide this is the ray number 2 the uppermost ray the ray which is parallel after refraction will appear to come from second focal point okay it, it appears to coming from because it is getting uh, it is uh, getting tilted outward yeah it is diverging now okay and the third ray which is passing to the center of this lens uh, it will go and deviate it if we are in the paraxial regime and lens is thin enough then this ray will go undeviated and then we will see where does these all three rays meet okay so we see that the ray number 1 and ray number 2 they are not meeting yeah because they are going in different direction but if you extend them back okay let us choose different color okay if you extend these rays back yeah, then you see that all these three meet at point b okay and then you draw perpendicular from point B to the axis of the system and then you will get IB as the image of object OA. Okay. Here too we can defi define different uh, distances that the first focal length and then uh, the second focal length and then the object distance, image distance and so on and so forth. Okay. This is how the focal length uh, the uh, first and second principal forces are defined for both converging and diverging lens and this is how image formations are done yeah we usually take three rays first goes through or appear to go through uh, f uh, first focal uh, point the second ray which is parallel to the uh, lens axis it either goes to the first uh, second focal point or appears to uh, emerge out of the second focal point and third ray which pass uh, undeviated through the lens it must pass through to the center of the lens yeah if the third ray which is uh, pointing towards the center of the lens it will pass through undeviated okay and these three ray when they cut together and when they cross uh, each other's path or appears to cross e each other's path the point of cross section that, that point of cross section will define uh, the image yeah the height of the image in particular way yeah this is how the image is formed yeah once we know these things then considering similar triangles we can write these two formula yeah minus y prime by y is equal to minus f1 by x1 Okay, what are these two triangles? Now see here, the AO is your object and BI is your image. Okay, these are the three rays which forms this image. Okay, here the height would again be equal to Y because uh, the AK this uh, first parallel uh, this ray is parallel to the opti uh, this axis of the system. Therefore, uh, uh, y this would be Y here. Now, F1 and F2 are the focal length and the different distances are shown here. And then if you consider these two triangles these two, which are similar triangle and uh, apply the rules then you will get this formula okay similarly you can get this yeah this distance would be y prime yeah uh, sorry i in, in uh, okay this is y and this is y prime yeah and uh, uh, using the property of uh, similar triangle y prime by y this would be equal to this distance by this distance yeah this is what is given here in this first formula okay similarly in this triangle too we can do this the second triang uh, two triangles in which we will uh, uh, apply the similar uh, triangle rule is these two yeah this is the second two triangles and from these two triangles <coughs> we will get this uh, expression 
Now, <coughs> in these two expression, the left hand sides are the same. Therefore, from above, we will get f1 f2 is equal to x1 x2. Okay. This particular formula is called Newtonian lens formula or Newton formula. Now, once these things are known, there is one more important definition which is left, which is called lateral magnification. Okay. Till here, we have talked about the distance of object from the lens, dist distance of image from the lens, distance of object from the first fo focal point, distance of image from the second focal point and so on and, and so forth. But we did not talk about the relation between height of object and height of image. That is considered in this definition in lateral magnification. Lateral magnification M. Okay, M is uh, the representation for the lateral magnification. Okay. The lateral magnification is represented by M and it defines the ratio of the height of the image to that of the object. Okay. In this figure in the previous slide, height of the image was Y prime and height of the object was Y. Therefore, Y prime by Y will define lateral magnification and from the geometry you can easily write that y prime by y is equal to v by u. Okay? Now, again using the geometry, we can write m is equal to f2 plus x2 by f1 plus x1 and that is again equal to minus f1 by x and that is again equal to minus x2 by f2. Yeah? There are, these are the different ways of calculating lateral magnification. Okay? Now, if m is greater than 0, the image is upright. What it says is that that m is equal to y prime by y and if you see this figure, then you see that i b is inverted, y prime is negative, therefore you put minus y prime and therefore m would be less than 0, yeah? it would be a negative quantity and if m is less than 0, it clearly says that image is inverted. Okay? Now, if what if m image is if, if what if, if if m is greater than 0, m is greater than 0 means m is equal to y prime by y and they both are positive, y prime is positive as well as y is positive. When will this happen? When both object and image, the, when they both are upright then only this will happen. Okay? And it means that when m is greater than 0, image is upright. Okay. This is a uh, very important definition and it uh, tells the lateral magnification tells how big the image is as compared to the object and whether it is and, the, and the, whether it is upright or inverted. Yeah. The magnitude of m tells the relative size of the image with respect to the object and the sign of m whether m is positive or negative this will tell you whether the object is sorry whether the image is upright or it is inverted yeah and thank you this is all for today and we will meet you in the next class thank you for your patience